2018 is the second year that uh, we presented distinguished services to the Australian Screen Award to an individual that has made an outstanding contribution to the film and television industry and in particular providing opportunities through their work to Australian composers. To announce this year's recipient, and I know who the recipient is and it's fabulous, I am delighted to introduce a man variously described as a composer, a musician and a conductor, none of which ju does justice to this man's extraordinary achievements in composition for film soundtrack and classical works. You've already seen him on stage tonight. Welcome back on stage, Nigel Westlake. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it, it is my very great honour and privilege to introduce the 2018 recipient of the Distinguished Services Award. A filmmaker of the utmost integrity and a storyteller of immense facility, Robert Connolly has always believed in the power of cinema as a force for good. For Rob, filmmaking is an integral part of our culture that tracks our stories, regulates our consciousness and reflects a mirror on our world. He is a modern day dreamer. He is a custodian of the yarn. His vast output embraces a plethora of narratives, astounding in their complexity and deeply moving in their emotional engagement. A passionate advocate for social reform, Rob has never been afraid to apply the blowtorch to ignite confronting and controversial issues and is no stranger to the potency of the medium as a catalyst for political discussion and debate on important issues. He is an artist with an intensely driven agenda, fiercely motivated by his love of the medium, possessing a razor sharp intellect that is constantly on standby to tease and to crave answers. Rob has been an advocate and a champion of Australian music for his entire career and has consistently shown great vision and insight in matching his narratives with bold, intuitive and compelling soundscapes from a rich diversity of local composers. The smouldering, disturbing and visceral score for The Boys by the iconic jazz cult trio The Next. The erudite sophistication and masterful orchestration of The Bank by Alan John. Lisa Gerard's haunting, emotive and unearthly incantations for Balabo and the stark dislocation and threatening electro sample world of underground with Julian Assange's story by Frank Titas are all testament to a fertile heritage of numerous creative partnerships and meaningful collaborations. In fact, you would be hard pressed to find another individual who has given the voice to the, to the artistry of so many gifted composers in this room tonight. A man who has nurtured our community and provided the resources for our local talent to shine and to realize their craft so thoroughly and with absolute integrity. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of Rob's career. With credits as a director, producer, screenwriter, and as head of one of Australia's most successful production companies, the title filmmaker truly applies to Robert Connolly. From honest stories about the complexity of family to politically charged raw real life drama, Robert has never followed a predictable path and has powerfully showcased the work of Australian composers like Lisa Gerard, Francois Titas, Bryony Marx, Anthony Patos, and most recently, Evelyn Ida Morris in his film and television projects. In 1991, while producing a play at the Griffin Theatre, Robert met actor David Wenham. He decided to adapt that play, The Boys, into a feature film and applied to AFTAS to undertake a film degree. It was here that Robert formed a partnership with John Maynard, joining production company Arena Film. Dedicated to producing high quality cinema with a political focus and social themes, Arena Film introduced directors Jane Campion, Vincent Ward and Rowan Woods to the world. As a producer of The Boys, Robert found success with his first feature film, 
It premiered in competition at the Berlin International Film Festival in 1998, was nominated for 13 AFI awards, including Best Film, and went on to become a classic in Australian cinema, featuring music by seminal experimental group The Nex. Since then, he has garnered numerous awards and accolades for his work, collaborating with an impressive and diverse range of composers, from Alan John's orchestral and choral score on The Bank, Lisa Gerard's haunting composition on the political thriller Balibo, Basil Hodgius's affecting score for the 2007 AFI Best Film winner Romulus My Father, and Nigel Westlake's joyful celebration of childhood in Paper Planes, which garnered Connolly an actor for Best Original Screenplay. As a director, his films have screened at over 30 major international film festivals, including the San Sebastian Film Festival and the Toronto International Film Festival. Beyond feature films, he curated the ambitious Tim Winton cinematic event, The Turning, and collaborated on the internationally acclaimed video game, Warco, developed to train journalists to work in war-torn regions. Like many of his filmmaking contemporaries, Robert has also recently enjoyed success with projects created for TV, including Director of the Slap, Underground, the Julian Assange story, Barracuda, and the 2018 British series, Deep State. A champion of Australian film and television, Robert served on the Screen Australia board from 2008 to 2012 and continues to introduce and mentor emerging talent and new creative voices. He is well known for taking great care that the score plays a vital role in all of his productions. For his ongoing contribution to Australian storytelling, tonight we celebrate producer, director, writer and filmmaker Robert Connolly. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Robert Connolly. <laughs> Just a bit overwhelmed by, by all of that. I would like to say a few words. Just thank you, Jessica, and, and the orchestra, and thank you, Nigel. Those I, I don't think anyone's ever talked about my work like that. I'm very touched, and it was absolutely delightful to work with you. Um, I, I kind of, when I got the phone call about this award, I, I was so flattered, and, and it meant so much to me, and uh, it's amazing to be here with so many gifted and talented people. And, and thank you, Caitlin and, and uh, Afra and Anne Kolsky, AGSP, uh, for, this, for this award. Really, for me, I'd just like to take the chance to use the opportunity to thank the composers I've worked with. Um, reflecting on, on the award, if I think of all my films, the moments um, that people always talk about and the moments of great um, insight into the human condition are all scored uh, by quite extraordinary music. Uh, I feel there's been many times I've struggled in my work and, you know, you have these skills as a director, you kind of know how to perform a bit, to write, the screen language of the camera, but composition is something that uh, has eluded me. I have no, I couldn't compose one bar of music. And uh, it makes the, the impact that music's had on my work all the more significant because it's kind of like alchemy or magic for me. 
um, I'm in awe of the cre creative capacity and the profound insights that composers have, have brought to my work. Um, I'll just mention a few, you know, the, the first film I worked on, The Next, uh, composed the score. They read the script once, they visited set once, uh, they watched the film once, they went into a recording studio for a week without the film and came out the other side having improvised music that I think still stands the test of time in its own right as music about kind of fractured masculinity that's as relevant today as ever. Um, on the bank, I asked Alan John kind of very naively, as you do as a first time director, to, to do a Bernard Herrmann-esque score. I didn't know what that meant. And he came back to me with this music that absolutely terrified me. Um, orchestral, choral, he gave me these sketches. I had no idea what to do with it. And uh, John Maynard, who's here, uh, took me for a long drive one day down towards Canberra to meet with Bruce Smeaton, the great Australian composer. And he'd, um, Bruce listened to the music and he kind of grabbed me and said, what is it with you young directors, you know, great filmmakers, when they have a sex scene, they have a great sex scene, you know, when they have a car chase, they have a great car chase, and when they have music, they have music, you know, this music of Alan's is fantastic, it's wonderful, he's gifted, use it, you know, and he, and Bruce really challenged me early in my career to kind of own the music, and, uh, I think back on the bank, there's two things I'm most proud of. One is that 16 years ago, we made a film about how terrible banks are. <laughs> and, and Alan John's music, uh, it was exceptional. Um, th there was a moment in Lisa Gerard's studio out near her farm, it was when the bushfires were threatening the farm, and, and we were there looking at this very tragic scene where Roger Rees goes to his death, and um, we were struggling with it. And, um, I think we might have even had an, a mild fight about something. And, and Lisa stepped up to the microphone and just sang to the imagery. And I found myself weeping. And afterwards, she said that she saw screen music as attempting to uh, be a microscope, uh, looking deep to try and find the soul of the work that you compose for. And I saw that kind of magically happen in front of me. Um, I've been blessed with other moments too, you know, Bryony Marks on Barracuda and sitting with the Olympic swimmer Nicole Livingston saying, you've captured what it feels like to be under the water when you're racing. And I thought Bryony somehow knew that and helped me there. I think of David Page's music on the film uh, Spear, which spoke of kind of musical traditions and storytelling that was far beyond anything that, uh, that I could ever have imagined. But I have to say my most favourite moment in 22 years uh, was looking across the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra at Nigel conducting his score for Paper Plane. And the music was big and it was epic and it was sweeping and it, had, it felt like love itself. And I realised looking at Nigel that it actually was a profoundly intimate piece of composition despite the scale and that he had composed a piece that had a beautiful simplicity about childhood uh, and the relationship between a young boy and his father. And I, I felt something there, Nigel, which I, I can't thank you enough for because that film was lifted and elevated by that music. Um, very quick, just to wrap up, I'd like to thank a few people. Did Nick Myers make it? He was invited. He's the editor of all my films. He's tormented composers and Nigel. Um, but he's also made great friends of composers and he, he famously, when he, when he won his first AFI award for editing, got up and said, the first person I'd like to thank is the composer and anyone who saw the film without the music will understand why. <laughs> I was in the audience too, so it was very unkind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Jane, um, who on our first date bought me Keith Jarrett's Cologne concert and uh, I think we all agree, you know, falling in love should be scored by music. Um, Damien Trotter, who's here, who worked uh, with me back in um, the very beginning on the, on the Boy, and I think has contributed to every single film that I've worked on, and we're collaborating further, and has also been a great champion of Australian music. Um, at, at various times too, you know, and I guess it's the unsung role as the music supervisor and Gemma Burns, who's worked on things from the slap, uh, you know, on through my career. Um, 
very significantly uh, Robert Patterson, who many of you would know uh, for many years as the head of ABC Classics and then ABC Music. I don't think there's any other individual in our industry that has championed the value of screen music in its own right with all of the massive number of soundtrack albums that ABC Music released, certainly all of mine. And beyond that, Robert championed uh, the scale of music. It was his um, help that got us the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and throughout my career was to allow the music to have that kind of recognition. If you hear today, that feeling you get when the music is performed by an orchestra. And it's exciting that Robert and I are in business again and, and we've got a few exciting things coming up, a big announcement soon about a, an initiative with uh, screen content and music. Um, but finally, really, I, I, I have to thank my parents, uh, Mary and Vince. Uh, Vince is here tonight. And they say that, um, they say that children can't develop a love of reading unless they're read to and they grow up in a house full of books. And I think the same can be said for music. Um, and my childhood was full of my mother performing and music everywhere. Um, it was a house and a home full of music. Um, my, my father reminded me the other day of something that my mum had said where after listening to one of her favourite pieces of classical music, she said, everything I need to know about life is in that word. And how amazing for me as a young man to grow up in a home where the magic of music is so, so present. Um, but thank you all, I'm, I'm so touched by this. Um, it's been incredible to receive this award, thank you.